No other purchase has had quite a significant impact on my life as this. The Fujifilm X100F. I love it to bits. It's changed the way that I shoot photos. It's made such a huge impact on me professionally. It's been a big feature of this channel. So much of where I am today I owe to this camera and I just absolutely love it to bits. This has been such a phenomenal purchase. But today I'm here to introduce to you the next generation in the X100 series. Introducing the X100V. This is the fifth incarnation, the 10 year anniversary of the X100. Now, before we get into the specs and the info on this camera, I just want to preface to say that the specs themselves aren't what draws me to new cameras. The things that I am always looking for in new equipment, if I am looking for new equipment, is usability. Is there something new with this camera that enables different elements of usability, things that reduce friction and make my work as a photographer easier. The perfect camera to me is the one that gets you excited to go out and shoot, the one that you just can't help but reach for and grab every time you leave the house. For me, that has been the X100F. But there have been times when I couldn't reach for it, certain scenarios that it wasn't usable in, but now I can. A little bit more on that in a moment. So, my first impressions of the Fujifilm X100V. Now, bearing in mind, I was only handed this earlier and I've actually got to give it back later. Um, I'm not allowed to shoot with it in public. This is purely just a hands-on look at it. And uh, by the time you're watching this video, you would have seen the Fujifilm X Summit, which has just gone live announcing this camera. Immediately at looking between the black and the silver here, there is a new material being used on the top plate. It is a refined design, there's more of a matte finish to it. And once again, I was just drawn to this silver. It is gorgeous. It's so, so premium in the way that it looks. When I came from the X100F, it was sort of hard to know how that camera could be improved any further in terms of its design. What sort of step could we go without it going into the realm of extremely expensive materials? But the designers here, they've made such little tweaks to things that when you look at it on the previous version, kind of makes you question what was the judgment there? For example, we've got really straight, clean lines across the design. Things just align and look nicer and more usable. There's less of the chromey aspect to the dials and it's all kind of matted off and dusted down. There's a sharper edge to the detailing here. It just overall feels solid. It looks premium. And I've always said it, the X100 is a camera that when you look at, you want to pick it up. You want to inspect it. Whenever I've handed it to friends and they want to shoot with it, it makes them shoot even more with it. When you look to the back of the camera, you will immediately notice there's a little tilt screen here. Now it only works on the single axes and it remains directly in the center of the lens uh, and your image that you're shooting through. So this is perfect if you want to shoot from the hip. It fits so snug. It's really, really flat on the way to the back of the body. It's so unnoticeable, really. If you don't like tilt screens, you don't have to use it. I, for one, am a fan of this. It's also a touch screen. The second major thing noticeable on the back here is there is no longer a D-pad. You just have the joystick and, of course, the touch controls. This doesn't offend me too much. But there were times when I used the D-pad previously on setting some of the functions such as changing my auto ISO uh, between the different brackets that I'd set up. Now I believe you do those with swipes on the screen or just in the menu. Overall, it looks cleaner. Um, I don't think it's really gonna get in the way too much of the way that I'm shooting. I'm very rarely using that. And every time I used the menus previously, it was always with the joystick. I've said multiple times how enjoyable this little joystick is to use. You'll also feel that as you're holding the back, there is a little bit more of a bump and a grip. So what this does is it just pushes that Q menu slightly further around, protects it a little bit from accidental presses. And of course, there is a little bit more of a grip here. All of the dials across the board just feel that much more refined. And one of the things that I really love about when you look at the top plate here, is things are just so much more compacted and neatened together. You no longer have this dead space in the middle that was such a dust and dirt trap. Honestly, my X100 got filthy in that area. I was constantly cleaning it. Hopefully now with this dial sitting nice and snug in there, you're not gonna get that. But overall, it just looks clean. It just looks refined. I think refinement is the real key word here across this camera. There's been a redesign to the ISO dial. So as you have the shutter dial here, 
you lift and click into the ISO mode and then you can spin it freely. You no longer have to hold it and turn it at the same time. When I first picked up the X100V, I actually thought it felt a little bit heavier. It is, but only nine grams. I think it's just the, the slight sort of sharpness to the edges here just gave it that much more of a solid feel that mentally it felt like it was heavier, but nine grams, that's really not very much to be honest. And then the final physical feature that I've noticed that's different the focus switch on the side going between manual, continuous and single is now just a little bit more defined and a little bit more intentional in the way that you switch it. So that's my overall look at it from what meets the eye and my first visual impressions. Now let's dive a little bit deeper and find out what is actually different on the inside. So this new material that you're seeing on the top here, this is a solid aluminium plate. This is the raw color of the metal. It's no longer a coated metal, so scratches and things like that, they're not gonna show up as much as they do on the previous version. On the black, this I believe is an anodized aluminium. Doesn't have that same sort of matte finish and I'm really drawn to this silver version. The absolute biggest feature I had requested in the previous X100 series was to have a weather resistant body. I love shooting in the rain. These are times when I can't pick up the X100. But I am glad to say the X100V is now fully weather sealed. With one caveat. You have to add a little sort of filter and ring attachment to the front of the camera lens. But otherwise everything else is fully weather sealed and I couldn't be happier about that. This then means that there are times when I can have this camera and confidently shoot in the rain, shoot in deserts, dust, sandstorms, whatever, and feel very happy that it's going to be more protected than the previous version. That doesn't mean it's invincible, but it is that much closer to being usable in those situations. I've asked about it and they said it's rated to the same sort of degree as the X-T3, and that already is a very weather sealed camera. This tilting touchscreen is a much higher resolution, it looks sharper, it's more responsive, and the colours just seem that much more vivid. Likewise the EVF, the EVF now has a higher resolution, and it has more color output. So it's now got a 97% of the sRGB, whereas the previous one was a 93 or a 92%. So you're gonna be seeing more colors there. Um, and to the trained eye, it may actually be quite noticeable. The EVF OVF unit in here is actually the same as what's in the X-Pro3 as well. The lens on the front of this has also been fully redesigned. So there have been quite a few calls for this amongst the community as the previous camera wasn't that sharp at F2, especially if you're shooting up close to things. This now has an extra spherical lens element, which makes it significantly sharper at F2. But also as you go further throughout the F-stops, you're gonna be seeing a sharper performance throughout. It's kind of a shame the focus is still the same sort of design here so it's just that infinite scrolling uh, kind of moving around. Would have been nice to have had something that had some markers on it. At the same time it is nice and compact as this little pancake because it's a fixed lens. The ND filter built in here which is one of my most used features of the X100 has now gone up a stop. So this is now a four stop ND filter over a three stop on the previous one. Pretty much just means you're able to shoot in much brighter conditions with the same shutter speed that you prefer. In terms of film simulation, we've now got a Turner and the classic negative on here. A Turner, of course, is from the video filmmaking stock, which brings me on to the fact that this has better video if you were to use it for video. I personally don't use the X100 for video, but it's nice to know that this does have the ability for DCI 4K, if you so wish. You can shoot 10-bit out on HDMI, otherwise it's 8-bit included. Again, I'm personally not one to be using this type of form factor for video, but if this is your only camera, you're gonna be getting a great picture from it. And remember, having video in a camera, even if you're not gonna use the video features, isn't a complete waste of resource. The actual processes required for video lend themselves very well to photography. That's how you get the faster frame burst mode. This now shoots 11 frames a second over eight on the previous. It's how you get the faster autofocus. All of those better processes that the camera is doing, they come from the fact that they are required for those video technologies. On the side, the ports and the connections, they've also had a little bit of an update and a shift around. We've now got a USB-C 3.1 generation one port. This can be used to charge the camera. If you're leaving it unconnected, it will charge it fully. If you have it plugged in whilst you're shooting and it's operating, then it will just remain powered. You do still have the battery in here. However, it doesn't actually come with a battery charger anymore. So now 
as a standard user, if you want to charge this, you would just plug in USB-C. You could get the battery charger if you wanted or if you've already got one, because this uses the same batteries as the X-T3 and below on all other cameras. And that battery life is much improved over the previous version. So we're now shooting at around 350 shots if you're using the electronic viewfinder over the previous, which was 270. That's a significant bump in battery performance. So yeah, everything is just running that bit more efficient using the X-Trans 4 sensor. That's the 26 megapixel one, same as in the X-T3 and the X-Processor 4. Likewise, the same in the X-T3. So let me run through some of my final thoughts on the X100V. And remember, this is just a first look hands-on. I desperately want to use this more. So I'm going to see if I can get my hands on it again. But if not, I will be upgrading to this camera. I am impressed by the iterations to it. At times, it felt like it could just be iterative, and other times, it feels like huge steps ahead. So this will be coming out end of February for the silver version. The black one, I believe, is end of March. I think I'm set on getting the silver version. I mean, between the two, they're both beautiful cameras, and the aesthetic to it shouldn't really matter, but I think that silver, just that, that matte finish on it is so nice. I think when you see it in person, you'll realize what I'm talking about here. It doesn't necessarily add anything to the camera. It's just the appearance to it. Um, but likewise, you feel good shooting with it. You feel good holding it. It makes you want to pick it up and shoot with it. And in turn, if you're shooting more, you're going to be getting better. So I want to ask you guys, when I eventually do buy this camera, what do you want me to cover with it? What would you like to see me try out with it? Do you have any requests on things? Where would you like to see me shoot with this? Um, and likewise, what do you think about the camera? Are you potentially going to be getting it? What do you think of the upgrades? Do you think it's worth it? If you're not going to be getting the X100V, then as all things in tech, that means the X100F is going to be cheaper. And by all means, that is a fantastic camera. I still recommend the X100F it is such a great camera. This is obviously a couple of steps up on things. But in the grand scheme of things, if your budget's tight on stuff, the X100F is now going to be that much more affordable. So hopefully you'll be seeing some more videos from me about the X100V. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel to catch those. I've still got some other videos coming from New York that I'm going to be throwing in before this. Uh, they were filmed way before I got my hands on one of these. I know there was a few things in the comments. People thought I already had one of these, but... Honestly, I didn't. And uh, likewise, I've started to write things on my blog again. So make sure you go and check out my blog. I can add some extra thoughts and I can finally share some images once I get shooting with this. Um, so all the links are in the description. I look forward to seeing you on the channel again soon. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Catch you later. Bye bye. What do you think they're going to call the next X100? My money's on X100H for hex. We've already had the X100s, the X100S for second, T for third, F for fourth, V for five. Can't use S again. I'm going for H. Leave a comment down below. What do you reckon? I reckon it's going to be H. Maybe we'll find out in about three years' time.